Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the History Cloak channel. Nikita Khrushchev is out of here. He has been kicked out by the Politburo. They don't like his leadership style. They want somebody else. And into that role steps Khrushchev's heir apparent, a man named Leonid Brezhnev. So on today's episode, we're going to take a look at Brezhnev and a couple other leaders of the Soviet Union and look at their impact on the Soviet Union and on the world stage. So ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. Leonid Brezhnev actually led the coalition that removed Khrushchev from power. He had risen the ranks as Khrushchev had risen the ranks and became one of his close associates. Everyone kind of knew Brezhnev was going to take over, but Brezhnev decided, hey, I actually will take over and remove Khrushchev from power. So starting on October 15th, 1964, Leonid Brezhnev is going to rule the Soviet Union for the next 18 years. Brezhnev is known for two particular things, the Brezhnev Doctrine and his execution of that doctrine. He's also known for his participation in detente with Richard Nixon. So we're going to briefly take a look at both of those, see what it looked like, and also see kind of how Brezhnev ruled the Soviet Union. The Brezhnev Doctrine is basically this. If any country that the Soviet Union controls tries to get out of communism or break or loosen its ties with the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union has the right to militarily go to that country and stop them from breaking ties with the Soviet Union or ending communism. So when it comes to the Brezhnev Doctrine, Brezhnev was a hardliner. In other words, he was very committed to the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union's power in terms of their military and their control over the Eastern Bloc, all those countries that the Soviet Union had taken over. Probably the best example of the Brezhnev Doctrine is the Prague Spring of 1967-1968. Now Prague is the capital of the Czech Republic today. Back in this time, it was Czechoslovakia. The two countries we now know as the Czech Republic and Slovakia were one country. So in Czechoslovakia, there is an uprising against communism. Well, the Soviets came in with military force and crushed that uprising and put it down. That would be an example of the Brezhnev Doctrine. Now, alongside Brezhnev's belief that the Soviet Union could come in militarily and force any communist country within its control to stay in communism, Brezhnev also began funding leftist communist revolutions in other countries. So in the 70s and 80s, you begin to see a lot more countries in Central America. Now, not every country in Central America, but a lot more countries in Central America start to have communist revolutions. Same thing for some countries in South America. And Brezhnev is funding those. So he's funding revolutions around the world to add more communist countries to the communist community globally. During Brezhnev's reign, his goal was to continue to build up the Soviet Union's military to keep it on par or surpass the United States. Remember, you've had this space race for a while, started with Khrushchev. So right now, the Soviet Union is trying to match the U.S. strength for strength. Now, during the 70s, Brezhnev is in a perfect situation to try to match the United States strength for strength or influence for influence in the world because the U.S. is going through a tough time in the 1970s. You had the end of the Vietnam War, which had become unpopular with the U.S., and the U.S. had pulled out of Vietnam, leaving it to the communist Vietnamese, which was something unheard of or unthought of at the time. You also had the Watergate scandal that happens under Richard Nixon, where Richard Nixon is forced to resign. You then have the presidency of Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy Carter, his presidency is pretty much considered a failure. I know that's being hard, but let's just say economically and foreign policy wise, Carter did not do well. Here would be a perfect example. Here is the election map for Jimmy Carter when he ran against Gerald Ford in 1976. Four years later, when Jimmy Carter runs for re-election against Ronald Reagan, here is the electoral map. Notice a slight difference? Well, after four years of Jimmy Carter, Nobody in the U.S. was happy. You know things are going pretty bad when you lose that many electoral votes between your first election and your re-election. Now, this is not a video about that election. The point is, you had the end of the Vietnam War, Watergate scandal, and Jimmy Carter as president. 
well, the U.S. is right now down, and the Soviet Union under Brezhnev is promoting itself strength-wise on par with the U.S. This is why when you read a lot of documents from historians, from political experts, at this time, everyone just thought, you know what? It's just going to be the U.S. and the Soviet Union forever. Neither one is going to be able to defeat the other. Now, Richard Nixon, before the whole Watergate scandal, started a policy as president with the Soviet Union that we call detente. Now, this is a French word that means relaxation. The goal was to relax tensions with the Soviet Union and maybe build a little bit of a relationship with them. Probably the biggest thing that happened during this period of detente was the signing of the SALT-1 agreements between Nixon and Brezhnev on May 26, 1972. The SALT-1 agreement, SALT by the way means Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, the SALT-1 agreement limited the anti-ballistic missile capabilities of both countries. In other words, they were only allowed a certain number of missiles. Now, did the Soviet Union actually follow this treaty? Eh, not really, but the SALT-1 agreement is still considered a success by some because, hey, when would the Soviet Union, the US ever actually sign an arms limitation treaty at all? Especially if you think back to their history after World War II. By the way, detente is considered to have lasted from 1968 until 1979 when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Again, because Leonid Brezhnev, under the Brezhnev Doctrine, was trying to prop up a communist government in Afghanistan that had fallen. At this point, this is pretty much the end of everything that Brezhnev did. Now, if you're asking yourself, wait a second, is that it? Is that all? Well, yeah, Brezhnev is pretty much known for pushing the Soviet military to stay on par with the US, that space race idea of really having to pump funds into the Soviet military, into the Soviet space program to stay with the United States. That way they still have the same amount of influence the US does in the Cold War. That is his lasting legacy. He didn't do much for the Soviet people because, well, communism doesn't do much for any group of people in a country where it's implemented. But they are feared globally. That's Brezhnev's entire goal, and that is what he achieved. Now, after 18 years of rule, Brezhnev is going to die on November 10th, 1982. And a new man, Yuri Andropov, is going to become the leader of the Soviet Union. Now, Yuri Andropov, as leader of the Soviet Union, is going to do the basic historical equivalent of nothing. He's going to take over November 12th, 1982, and he'll die February 9th, 1984. Ta-da! Former head of the KGB takes over and dies a year and a half later. Wish I could tell you there was more, but that's it. After Andropov's death, Konstantin Chernenko takes over as leader of the Soviet Union on February 13th, 1984. Now, when he takes over, he is able to accomplish just about nothing. He dies a year and a month later, on March 10th, 1985. Both Andropov and Chernenko spent their entire lives in the Soviet government system, working their way up slowly to power. And they achieved power only to die a year and a couple months later. Both of these guys are a cautionary tale in a different way from, say, Lenin or Stalin or even Khrushchev. If you remember, there's a parable in the Bible in which there's a guy who has all these plans for the future and starts talking about, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And then all of a sudden God says, Fool, your soul is required of you this night. And who will all this stuff go to that you've built up? They're kind of that tale. How much murder did they turn a blind eye to? How much murder did they participate in? How many different things did they do within the communist system all to achieve power just to get it and <laughs> dead? So ladies and gentlemen, there's a moral and a lesson to be learned from their lives, just as there's a moral and a lesson to be learned from the lives of Lenin and Stalin and Khrushchev and Brezhnev, even though they ruled a lot longer. History is replete with wonderful lessons if you're willing to actually listen.
With Chernenko dead, that leaves the final and last leader of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, to take over. But that's for the next episode. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them politely and respectfully in the description box below. Also, if I might add, let's also, in the comments section, I notice a little bit of profanity in some of the comments, and with this video being for kids as well as for adults, let's see if we can keep the comments section kosher as well in our comments. I would greatly appreciate that. I'm Mr. McGee. Take care.